Hello, I'm Charles Kovess, Australasia's passion provocateur. Welcome to this week's episode of the Charles Kovess Show. In this week's episode, I explore reality and particularly the ways in which you are creating your reality, your own special reality. Are you aware that you are creating it? And do you love your reality or are you only enduring it? Just putting up with it, just enduring your life. You aren't stuck with it, you know. You can wake up. You can change it. How? Stick around. That's what this show is about. I've got some ideas for you. This weekly show is founded on the formula SA plus P equals S. Self-awareness plus passion equals success. Your self-awareness plus your passion equals success. Since 1993, when I was my successful legal career, to become Australasia's passion provocateur, I have inspired, educated and provoked people, individuals, audiences, groups, to discover and pursue their passion, to live life with passion. I've done that in workshops, in speeches at conferences, in one-on-one executive coaching. I've done that in my books, Passionate People Produce and Passionate Performance. I've done that with Passion Points to Ponder. I have done it in conversations with people. I have done it with team members. I have done it by working with teams over an extended period of time because the learning journey takes time. This show is also guided by Socrates' famous principle, the unexamined life is not worth living. So I hope that you watching this show, listening to this show as a podcast, are inspired, are provoked to examine your life so that your life is worthwhile, so you have examined your life. You can see I'm wearing my red jacket, red, the colour of passion. I wear it so that when you see me, when you see red, you think of passion. You think of your passion and you say, am I living my life with passion? Am I loving what I'm doing? Am I enthusiastic every morning when I wake up? That's what the examined life gives you each week. I explore one big idea that can change your life. One idea because too many ideas confuse us. If I give you too many ideas, too many lessons, you don't know what to choose from. You don't know what's relevant. So I'm hoping that within this one big idea, you go, wow, I can use that. Each week, I also share with you simple resources to help reinforce that idea. A song, a book, a quote. A spiritual tip, a health tip, and some humour. Life was not meant to be taken too seriously. I think humour is is a crucial element of our lives. And as that classic line from the Reader's Digest over many years said, laughter is the best medicine. Hope you're doing lots of laughing. This show is not politically correct. I have no intention of being politically correct. This show also subscribes to the view that addictions can be wonderful, just like my addiction for great coffee. And a a shout out again for Republicans Coffee, Australian made coffee, coffee beans. I'm now doing plunger coffee from time to time because of my mate Peter. Mmm. Love coffee, addicted to coffee, but no more than five, six. As Dr. John Tickell famously wrote in his book, everything in moderation except four things. Sex, laughter, fish and vegetables. And so my coffee drinking is moderate. Five or six cups a day, not 20. I love it. This show also subscribes to the view that we have a spiritual life. So I hope I provoke you to examine that spiritual part of you. The human spirit is a remarkable resource that every one of us has. 
And any team that you have seen functioning well has team spirit. That's because great teams tap into our spirituality. So, what's happened in the past week? Well, I'll tell you a big deal today. Today is the 4th of July in Australia. It will soon be the 4th of July in America and in England. It's also the start of the financial year in Australia and many countries around the world. But the 4th of July is special. And I want to read to you something that I quote in my book, Passionate Performance, my second book. And this is a profoundly important quote. I have read it before. I urge you, if you've heard it, to read it again. I, it's included in the book. It's a piece that I discovered many years ago. And it's called A Message of Mastery in a Changing World. This is relevant to what's happening this week, and particularly with the challenges in America. After the Continental Congress on July 2, 1776, voted to declare independence and set in motion those events Americans celebrate on 4 July each year, John Adams wrote an inspirational letter to his wife Abigail that pointed to the potential and the cost of radical change. He wrote, the Declaration of Independence ought to be commemorated as the day of deliverance by solemn acts of devotion to God Almighty. It ought to be solemnised with pomp, shows, games, sports, guns, bells, bonfires and illuminations from one end of the continent to the other. From this time forward forever. You will think me transported with enthusiasm, but I am not. I am well aware of the toil and blood and treasure that it will cost us to maintain this declaration and support and defend these states. Yet through all the gloom, I can see the rays of light and glory. I can see that the end is more than worth all the means and that posterity will triumph. End quote. The cost for those change agents was high. Five signatories were captured by the British as traitors and tortured before they died. Twelve had their homes ransacked and burned. Two lost their sons serving in the Revolutionary Army. Another had two sons captured. Nine of the 56 signatories fought and died from wounds or hardships of the Revolutionary War. They signed and they pledged their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honour. They had the vision, the values, and the resolve to see their change through. Americans continue to honour them. Can we learn from them? What values guide your changes? What costs are you willing to pay? What assets will you invest? Do you have the enthusiasm for the destination to sustain the journey to get there? Thankfully, they did. That's the end of that piece. And I urge you to think about that because the price of change can be high. And I think July the 4th is a crucial, crucial day in the fight for independence, in the fight for freedom. I honour, I remember every July 4th in my shows, in my work, and every time I read that piece, it inspires me to become willing to continue to pay the price. So this week is also important because it's my daughter's 40th birthday on the 1st of July. 1st of July was, of course, Lady Diana's birthday. So she was born on the first day of a financial year, my, the first of my five children. So happy birthday to Beck. We had a big celebration Friday night. There are more celebrations to come. It's a big deal hitting 40. You're getting into your fifth decade, my darling daughter. I was reminded last night about the Martin Luther King speech, the famous speech, his I Have a Dream speech. Do you realise he was only 39 when he died? 39. A year younger than my daughter. And he's still a global figure. His I have a 
dream speech ended with three phrases. Free at last, free at last, thank God we're free at last. I want you to think about that. You know freedom is a big issue for me. Freedom is a big issue at a time of lockdown. Freedom is a big issue to be able to resist vaccines being forced into your body, contrary to the Nuremberg Code, that nothing can be forced into your body without your informed consent. Free at last. The Declaration of Independence is about being free. Now have a look what's happening in America. Any of you that watch alternative media will see that the defunding of police and the mass resignations of police is causing chaos in many American cities. Guess what that's doing? Guess what that's doing? That's forcing people who want security to be locked in their homes. Just look at that. The chaos reigns, security disappears, the police are defunded on bullshit grounds, and people are trapped in their homes. Where has this freedom gone? Think about that. On the issue of vaccines in Australia, the government is criticised for the slow rollout. I suspect, in fact, I say to you that between 10 to 20% of people around the world have woken up to the fact that this proposed antidote against COVID-19 is not a vaccine, but a gene-manipulating jab. That's what I call it, gene-manipulated jab that is unproven, not safe, not effective. 10 to 20 percent. Now, I say to you that 10 to 20 percent of any population can absolutely change what a country does. That's, in fact, how the Nazis operated in Germany. Only 10 percent of Germans were members of the Nazis. 10 percent is enough. And the Declaration of Independence is a great reminder of the power to push back against authority that you don't consider it to be appropriate. Think about it. Do not give up. John Adams predicted it would be tough. It's always tough. William Wilberforce is one of my heroes when he pushed back against slavery in England. It took 30 years of lobbying, of cajoling, of educating, of provoking the British Parliament to vote to abolish slavery. 30 years. And it killed William Wilberforce as signing the Declaration of Independence killed a number of the signatories and killed many in the Revolutionary War against England. That's the price of freedom and freedom of thought and freedom of speech. So, important topics. And, you know... That's what this show is about, dealing with important topics to help you make your wise choices to live the life that you want to live. And as you know, one of the ways I want to live my life is to drink coffee. During the week, I've trained every day, riding the bike. I haven't been doing much swimming, haven't been doing much running, but riding of the bike, the exercise is so, so beautifully wonderful. Now, before I get to this week's big idea on reality, I remind you to visit our websites, covest.com for corporate programs, team building programs, public programs, and charlescovest.com for the details of the self-awareness and passion quest. Take a look at those websites. Subscribe to Passion Points to Ponder. Ask for a copy of the self-awareness and passion quest manifesto. Send me a message at charlescoves.com for any questions that you might have arising from those websites, possibilities for your career, possibilities for your teams. So, today's big idea. Do you love or merely endure the reality that you are creating, that you think is being imposed upon you as your life? Let me read again. Funny, I'm doing a lot of reading today, but that's what happens when you do a show, and it depends on what's relevant today. This is from a book, Awareness, by Anthony DeMello. 
A man found an eagle's egg and put it in a nest of a barnyard hen. The eaglet hatched with the brood of chicks and grew up with them. All his life the eagle did what the barnyard chicks did, thinking he was a barnyard chicken. He scratched the earth for worms and insects. He clucked and cackled, and he would thrash his wings and fly a few feet into the air. Years passed, and the eagle grew very old. One day he saw a magnificent bird above him in the cloudless sky. It glided in graceful majesty among the powerful wind currents, with scarcely a beat of its strong golden wings. The old eagle looked up in awe. Who's that? he asked. That's the eagle, the king of the birds, said his neighbour. He belongs to the sky. We belong to the earth. We're chickens. So the eagle lived and died a chicken. For that's what he thought he was. I have created seven strategies for passionate performance in your life. Seven strategies for passionate performance in your organisation. I do this as the bookmark as a business card. I use the acronym of passion. The A in passion for the seven strategies for you as a human being is accept your reality. Accept that you create your own unique picture of reality. You create it. You create your picture of reality. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that weird? I thought, you thought when we were young, that there are things that are real. There are things that are realistic. How could I be creating my picture of reality? How can you be doing that? How do you do it? Let me give you some examples of how you create your picture of reality. From various episodes of this show in the past, I've dealt with major topics. One big idea. One of them is key motivators. So here's the issues. Number one, what is pain? What is pain? There's no objective reality around pain. What is pain to you? The second issue, what is pleasure? Because pleasure and pain are the basic motivators. You want more p pleasure, you want less pain, unless, of course, you're a masochist, in which case pain gives you pleasure. But what is pleasure to you? You decide what that pleasure is. There's no objective reality on pleasure. Third issue, what is it possible for you to become as a human being? What's realistic? You say, realistic, I mentioned that earlier. What is realistic about what you can become? There is no answer to that. You are creating what's realistic. I'll tell you one thing that, that does actually trap you with realism, and that is the law of gravity. You might not believe in the law of gravity, but you will still fall to your death if you jump out of a plane, because gravity is a law. But there are not many such laws, and many of us live lives as if those laws are imposed upon us. Fourth issue, what do you hate? What do you hate is, that's going on in the world? What do you love that's going on in the world? But if you hate something that's going on, that is your created reality, and that leads you then to take certain action about it. The Oak Tree Foundation was founded by a 15-year-old kid who hated the poverty in the Philippines. By the way, this is important. And I do this test, I learnt this test through the book Factfulness. I've mentioned it before. In 1966, 50% of the world's population lived in the lowest level of poverty called extreme poverty. Today, that's 9%. We've had massive improvements on this planet, so don't be deluded by the bad news that you see all the time. Nevertheless, what do you hate? The fifth issue, what is ethical and moral? You make those decisions. They are big, difficult decisions. That impacts on your reality. You have a unique picture around what's ethical and moral.
The sixth issue, do you actually see reality? Scientists will tell you that when a bee is flying around, what that bee is seeing is totally different to what we're seeing. We foolish humans think that what we see is what is reality. No, the visible spectrum of light, we only see a tiny proportion of the whole spectrum of light and the, and the spectrum of hearing, sound waves, light waves. You're not seeing reality. That's just what is hit the light rays that are hitting your eyes, the back of your retina, and your mind is then interpreting what you're seeing. You're not even seeing the same thing that I see. You think you are, but you're not actually, because your mind is interpreting. Your mind interprets those light rays. Isn't that amazing? The, uh, tr they're transported by the optic nerve to the, your mind. You see, what you experience as life is created within your mind. And 12 angry men that I went to see last night at a non-professional theatre production was a magnificent production of the famous movie produced in 1957 starring Henry Fonda. 12 angry men, 12 jurors in a courtroom. Now, with my past history as a lawyer, I have a bit of understanding of the legal profession, particularly since I practised it for 20 years. And the th and I had not never seen the movie. And it was a brilliant, brilliant production. Like the quality of these non-professional actors was simply amazing. The power of the story and how 12 men, no were men in the show, no sexual diversity here, no gender diversity here. The 12 men all had different experiences of the same facts, the same evidence given at a murder trial. Just contemplate that. And indeed, that's why police are always looking for evidence because in a set of circumstances, in an accident, in a disaster, people all see different things, report different things. It's quite remarkable. I'm sure you've all seen that experience. And so 12 Angry Men is a beautiful lesson in understanding how our beliefs, our prejudices, our indoctrination cause us to go to send our thinking down different paths. When we see something, we then make assumptions. We create that reality. Twelve Angry Men is a powerful, wonderful movie. Henry Fonda was reported over all the movies that he made. It was one of his top three. That, this week is my recommendation for you to watch that movie and think about the reality of each of those, the unique reality of each of those individual jurors and what they thought from the same set of experiences, like remarkable, the same set of facts presented to them. So instead of a song this week, I've got the movie of the week for you. You do not have to endure the reality that you think is imposed upon you. You are creating it. I urge you to become aware, to become more conscious of your power to create a different reality so that you love your reality. Albert Einstein, the quote this week, Albert Einstein said this, Common sense is the collection of prejudices acquired by the age of 18. Common sense is the collection of prejudices acquired by the age of 18. See, 12 Angry Men was all about pre-existing prejudices. What are your prejudices? Are you aware of them? I hope I'm aware of them because I talk about this in each of these shows. I'm constantly asking myself, what are my prejudices? What do I actually believe? What, why do I believe what I believe? And how do those beliefs impact on how I think life should be lived? Now, I hope you realise that I never say to you on this show, never, that you should do something. I do not say that. I'm hoping to inspire and provoke and educate you so that you can make this choice because I don't know what your unique, weird life is all about, the purpose and the meaning of your life. I just hope to inspire you to discover what it is so that you examine your life because it's the examined life that is worth living. 
My book of the week is by Deepak Chopra, Ageless Body, Timeless Mind. And that gave me, when I read it years ago, a whole new awareness of the reality of health. Ageless Body, Timeless Mind. My spiritual tip for you is to explore your ethics and morals. If I said to you, what are your ethical and moral principles? We're not talking about law. The law imposes certain rules upon us. What are your ethics? What are your morals? Gain clarity about it. My health tip is be willing to embrace resistance. And by that I mean in your exercise, with your, this magnificent machine that we got, it is necessary to do some resistance work, to embrace the resistance. I do push-ups. I hate push-ups. But if I only do aerobic work, it's not enough. So what weight resistance work are you doing? And if you do your gene genetic analysis, you will note that some people can only burn fat by weight resistance, not by aerobic work. So a lot of people whose genetic makeup is a particular way, I'm told about 30% of the population can only burn fat through weight resistance work, through push-ups, through weight training. That's my health tip. And time for some humour. I hope you've been hanging out for this humour. And this is all about different realities. A couple, like Julie and me, go on vacation to a fishing resort. The husband likes to fish at the crack of dawn. His wife likes to read. One morning, the husband returns after several hours of fishing and decides to take a nap. Although not familiar with the lake, the wife decides to take the boat out. She motors out a short distance, anchors and continues to read her book in the fine sunshine. Along comes a game warden in his boat. He pulls up alongside the woman and says, Good morning, ma'am. What are you doing? Reading a book, she replies, thinking, isn't that obvious? You're in a restricted fishing area, he informs her. I'm sorry, officer, but I'm not fishing. I'm reading. Yes, but you have all the equipment. I'll have to take you in and write you up. If you do that, I'll have to charge you with sexual assault, replies the woman. But I haven't even touched you, says the game warden. That's true, but you have all the equipment. <laughs> Very clever. So, think about this week's big idea. You are creating your reality. I hope this big idea can make a massive difference to your life. I have worked with a number of people who have woken up to this possibility of being able to create a new reality, that in fact we each create our picture of reality. I hope I've provoked you, motivated you, inspired you, educated you to be willing to embrace a new way of living, to embrace change and to be like the signatories, the 56 signatories to the Declaration of Independence, willing to embrace the cost of change so that they love their lives, not merely enduring it, waiting for death to come along. That, in my view, is a shitty way to live your magnificent life. I again invite you to visit our websites, covest.com, charlescovest.com. My books are available, Passionate People Produce, passionate performance. If you enjoy this show, please subscribe to the YouTube or the podcast and please share the links to this show with your family, friends, networks, work colleagues. And until next week, may your life fulfill you, nurture you, support you in the way that you are creating your life so that it's the life that you have always dreamed of. It's a great way to live. I urge you to embrace it. Thanks for being with us. I look forward to being with you next week. Bye.